Welcome to Behind the Pen. This is our virtual panel discussion. This is the second one, actually. And of course, we did this because we could not be there. Um, we're supposed to be in New York. We actually supposed to be there yesterday, but we're supposed to have been there. And this is actually going to be on Black Indie Authors Day. And to me, I thought that was the best day to celebrate um, Behind the Pen, to merge the two celebrations together since it was going to be virtual and to have these panel discussions. And I'm so we have like a, a nice little mix. So I'm going to let y'all introduce yourselves, and then we're going to go right into the questions. Um, hi, I'm Tay Russ. I um, write Black romance. I do contemporary and a little sprinkle of romantic suspense every once in a while. And um, I have over 40 books to date, and I believe that's all. Hi, I'm Alexandra Warren. I write Black contemporary romance also, uh, usually with a focus on millennials, and I have written over 30 books to date. Hey, everybody. My name is Bailey. Um, I am an African American uh, romance author as well. I've written seven uh, books to date, and I'm excited to be here. Hi everyone, I am Danielle Allen. I've written 30 contemporary romance novels to date. Okay, so it's good to have you all here. So the first question, we're gonna talk about the coaches. This is entitled Black Romance and the Culture. Um, and one of the things that I've off, I always ask every author is, um, due to the current climate of things, um, one of my favorite like artists, performers, Nina Simone said like, you know, it's an artist's duty. Um, to reflect the times. So how important has it been that your your um, writing reflects the times that we're currently in? Anybody can answer first. I don't know. Um, I think it's, it's super important uh, for me. What One of the reasons that I started writing uh, books was because a lot of the books that I read that had a, a spiritual aspect to them were very antiquated, uh, old. They used a lot of old songs, a lot of old um things that just were not up to date are happening now and so it was one of the focuses that i that i took on when i started to write to make sure that it reflected the times that we're in and uh highlighted the things that are happening now so i think it's important and i think that it lends a voice gives us a voice for the future so that when people look back we're writing and telling our own stories and not just leaving it up to the history books okay Anyone else can hop right in? You want me to call on you? Because I'll call on Alexandra, because I'm looking down. Oh, I, I was going to jump right in, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as much as I like, feel it's super important to reflect the times, I also know that a lot of people read romance to escape from like what's currently going on. And so that's kind of been my focus. I, I talk to different readers about it. Like, what do y'all, do y'all really want to see, you know, everything going on? And they're like, we see it like we see it so we don't we don't necessarily want to read about it because that's usually our time to take a break from it and so i tried to you know find that balance between definitely representing the times and everything going on but also recognizing my role and giving people an escape from some of the craziness that is happening in the world today i'm with you on that one um tay uh, um basically what Alexandra said, that was kind of what I was thinking about, you know, as far as, um, especially with what everything is going on right now, um, you know, yes, there are some authors out there who are kind of leaning into that vein of, you know, writing in the here and now, but like Alexandra said, some of, some people just, <laughs> they want to get away from that. And so it helps to like, you know, write, um, just, I don't want to say normal, but like, right, just that fantasy of um, enjoying one another and just having a good time and not necessarily like having to, it's, it's a good way to get away from all of the things that are going on uh, in this time and place right now. Okay. Thank you. I agree with what everyone else said. Um, I feel like it is, for me, I'll like layer stuff in 
but ultimately um, I want, the, the books are a part of me. So I feel like it's important for me to say things in a certain way and they are layered into the books that I write. And so it's not just for other people's consumption that I put it in, but it's for me too. So I am talking about where I'm at at one time because I feel like the way I might react to something and the way I might put it in a book to react to one year could be different two years later after like some things happen. So it's, I think for readers, like it definitely is sprinkled in, but it also is a way to escape. But at the same time for me, as I'm writing it, I'm writing it for me. And if it feels good to get it out in that way, to layer it in in that way, to, to make sure I'm acknowledging things that are important to me in that way, then I do that too. So basically what everyone else said. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so one thing that I always say, I've, I've noticed too, is that Black romance is everywhere and it's nowhere at all at the same exact time. So it's in our music, it's in our celeb culture, it's like in the books that we read, like we love Black romance technically, even when it comes to like me and somebody's son, like think of, when you think about all of like the like celeb culture, our means, what we gravitate towards, it is Black romance. However, it's largely not as embraced on in like the mainstream as something that's very normal. Even when we have our cult classics, all of like our black cult classic films, what what is it? The Wood, Love Jones, they all have that black romantic undertone. So my thing is, how do you think that being a black independent author now in 2020 is helping to actually push that forward? And do you think that um, we're not like paying enough attention towards how we can actually just like change, like how we view ourselves as black women and black men. Like, I think a lot of people always say, we need to build up our self-esteem, we need to educate ourselves. But I'm like, we also need to learn how to love ourselves and love each other. And I think that with black romance as the genre, um, that's where we celebrate ourselves. There's no rift when we're like loving each other and happy. So how do you think that the, um, your genre that you write in is helping to push that forward now? I think all of that is important. And I think all of that is within contemporary romance. When you see Black people being loved on, Black people being celebrated, Black people um, enjoying themselves, I feel like that in and of itself is a way for you to see yourself differently, see other people who look like you differently, to learn to love yourself and love other people. I think it gives that credence to how you should love yourself and others. And then that's how you live. Um, that's how you live in love. So kind of piggybacking off of what Danielle said, I recently got a, um, a review on a book and somebody said it was beautiful to be seen, meaning that they read the book and they really saw themselves in these pages. They could really relate to the different struggles and insecurities and the highs and lows that the characters are having. And so as a Black romance author, we have this, you know, this beautiful obligation or way to be able to tell the reality that we're facing and to bring them into you know the fictional landscape but also be completely relatable to what people are experiencing in their real lives definitely i also think that um you know representation matters and i think that it's important um for us to show love because within the world Black love is not showcased. You know, it's showcased within our communities, but on a grander scale, it's not showcased. Uh, we see a lot of violence and we see, you know, homes that are not complete and things like that, but we don't necessarily see the love. We don't see reconciliation and we definitely don't see happy endings. So, and not in a sexual way, I mean, in a regular way. So I think that uh, um, it's important to, to showcase it. And I hope that our voices are really being heard, not just within our community, but without our community as well, outside of it, so they can see that we are not monolithic, that we love differently. We, we love hard, we love soft. We, you know, we do it all sorts of ways. So I'm hoping that it is really, um, transcending our thought process and what we are trying to accomplish and going further than that. Those are I think, great I'm sorry not to speak yeah. again, but I just, the self-love 
is so important. And I feel like that's the cornerstone of so many things and so many struggles that people have um, because there's a lack of it. And I think when you are feeling seen, when you do see yourself, when you see how to love, when you see a representation of healthy love, when you see all of these things, you're able to feed off of that and then build yourself up in a way that you're operating differently, you're operating in love. And so I think it's just important to have that out there for people to not only enjoy and like, yeah, good sex scenes are good for many reasons, but also like if you don't know how to like please yourself or others, then here's a guide or here's a way, or I didn't even know I would like that because there's something that you're not talking about. If you have never seen a healthy functional relationship and then you're reading a book about some people who are healthy and functioning, or you're reading a toxic couple and you're like, wait, they act just like how me and my significant other act. Maybe, maybe this isn't the right relationship for me. So being able to see these things are a way for you to see love and be love. I think that was great because especially growing up, I remember a lot of times I've heard some of my friends say the first time that they saw a function and family eat at the dinner table was when they watched the Cosby show. So I definitely know the impact that seeing yourself and reading about yourself in a different light or in a different way, but the people look like you can have on you. So those are all excellent answers. Um, now taking it back, 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 back it up. Stop. Um, that is my personality coming out, mm. but let's take it back for a little bit. How, like, when you first started writing, um, before the, before you even put the, the pen to the paper, it was this point that you said, you know what? I want to be a writer. I want to write the first book. And I have this idea in my head. I think this story is dope. I think it's bomb. And I think people will like it. How did you go from having it in your head to actually saying, you know what? It published. I wrote it. I got the editor. I got the cover. Did all of that. What was that story like? What was that next step that said, I want to make this a real thing? Because I think a lot of times people get caught up in the they get in the headspace and they're always searching for that like okay I got this great idea but then they it's like five years go by y'all didn't have five years that go by that went by you actually started to do it so what was that next thing that made you actually do it um well for me it was reading other people's writing um like when I first started well before I started I you know I've always loved to write but um, I was a young mom of like three kids at the time. And it was, I was searching for something that was just for me, you know, outside of being a wife and outside of being a mom. And when I started back reading romance again, specifically black romance, there was just like something sparked inside of me. And I was like, you know, well, hey, I could probably do this. And I believe it was in 2011. And so I gave myself a goal and I was like, by 2012, I want to be a published author. And um, I believe like I kind of briefly looked into possibly finding like going through a publisher or whatever, but that quickly, I quickly tossed that out the window and I was like, well, if I can do this myself, if I can like do this independently, well then yeah, let's just do this. And I started writing in 2012. That was when the first book came out. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, so for me, I think looking back on it now, the first book is the hardest, but also the easiest in a lot of ways because there's no pressure. Like nobody is looking for you. Nobody is checking for you. No, like you, your book can hide on Amazon forever and ever. Nobody knows it exists. Um, and so for me, I think I really trained my brain like, oh, this is just going to be a cute little hobby. Like, I'm just going to throw this up. Like, I'm just going to write this book and throw it up on Amazon and it's just going to be whatever. Um, but then you get that response and it's like, whoa, like I really did this and I really want to continue to do this. Um, so really just eliminating that, that fake pressure of, oh, people are going to like it, people are going to hate it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, nobody might not even know it exists. Like, just write for you and write what you want to write. And write what you want to see, you know, or write what you want to add to the landscape. Yeah, I agree. The first book was the easiest and the hardest at the same time because uh, as long as I didn't tell anybody I was doing it, I, I wasn't held to any standard or any level of pressure at all. You know, um, I didn't care necessarily what people were going to think because 
I didn't necessarily think anybody was going to read it, you know, so I just, I just wrote it. I think one of the things that stops people from pursuing uh, writing is waiting for the perfect conditions or waiting for that perfect story. And none of us have produced a perfect story yet. You know, we all have to go through, you know, revisions and editors and even, and proofreaders. And then even after all of that, there are still things that may be missing or we have skipped over or whatever is never perfect. And I think sometimes people are afraid of that. So it may stop them. It didn't stop, it didn't stop me um but after that first book i was way more aware of you know what i was doing and what i was putting out so like uh, alexandra said i think that the first book was the hardest and easiest at the same time okay thank you i wholeheartedly agree like it, i wrote it as a like 30 things do before you turn 30 project and so i wrote the first one and then my ex at the time he, like he was like this is good like you should publish it and i was like okay so we made a cover and i don't even want to tell y'all what that looked like but um but put it up there and then it was just like wrote a book then i went back to my regular job at the college i teach at and minded my business and then when a blogger like contacted me and was like hey this was really good like are you on Facebook? Do you know, did you know there's a whole indie like community? I was like, no. And then that's how I even discovered like the indie community. And so I think writing it um, and just putting it out there, it was, it was easy because it was like, all right, like I accomplished something, I did something. And then after that, when people are expecting things, that's when it's like, oh, okay. Because then it's not only from other people, but you're expecting it from yourself. And so you can sometimes put that pressure on yourself. But writing the first one is just getting over that hump to actually do it. That makes a lot of sense. So how do you maintain a balanced career in the age of social media when you get feedback instantly it's not so much of like you know oh i write a book and i might just see something a couple months later you're getting at this weekend or even having your own facebook groups and having that community where yeah they love you but then they can demand okay where's the next book where's the next book and you have that pressure not knowing that you have a lot of things going on in your personal life whether it's good or bad or indifferent like right now we're in quarantine like so everything is everything now you're all, you're in your house your workspace and your home life is combined so a lot of pressures that you didn't have maybe before is just like totally different. So how do you balance that to make sure that you still have that mind to actually go into your space to create? I feel like for me, I only put out things that I want to put out and that I feel good about. If I don't feel good about it, I'm not gonna publish it. And so that makes it easier. So if someone else doesn't connect with it, then that's, that was their reaction to, that was their um, relationship with the story. I feel like it, I know it was well-written, but maybe they didn't like the content. Maybe they didn't identify with the characters. Maybe they weren't feeling the, like whatever the, as long as I like it and it's well-written that's all I can do because everyone comes to every situation, including reading with their own stuff. And so reading, when they're reading it, it could trigger something that makes them feel a way that has nothing necessarily to do with me or my work. It has to do with them and their relationship with that topic or that character or whatever the case may be. So when you see people um, write or review and they are, they're not feeling it. I mean, that's part of, you know, that's part of it when you're putting your, your art out there, but because I wouldn't have published it if I didn't like it, I don't take it personally. I haven't seen too much where it's something like that's a personal attack, but like if someone's just like, oh, I hated this for these reasons, I'm like, well, I mean, because I would love for everyone to love everything I've ever written, but that doesn't always happen. So if someone's like, oh, I hated, I hated the way that ended. Um, okay, like, I can only like, I appreciate, 
I appreciate that they bought it. I appreciate that they read it. I appreciate that. And if they didn't like whatever the aspect of the book was, then that's between them and, and the work. That isn't really about me anymore. It was about me when I wrote it and I published it. Then every other relationship between my work and the book is, I mean, my work and the audience is between those two entities. It's not about me anymore. Yes, I like that. Beyonce says something similar, but I like it from both of y'all. Um, anybody else? <laughs> I think uh, you have to, I think growing into um, being confident in what you put out is is important. Um, writing for yourself and coming and letting it come from you and then it's the book and the audience you know and, and the book not you is an important distinction and I'm glad that Danielle said that because a lot of times when especially starting out and uh, I know for me I felt like every review was of Bailey West and not necessarily of the book so you take you 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 take in all the cheers and the uh, um, you know applause but then what really settles on you are those are those negative things you know for whatever reason as human beings we tend to you know remember the negative things like even on social media and i said this before you can notice how like i can go and somebody will post something it'd be five thousand people that say that's good that's good and that one person that says you suck is the one that gets the response from the person that posted it you know and so um, learning how to separate the two is um, important. And, and as you grow as an author and as you learn um, as an artist, that um, once I put it out, then that's, you know, that's your relationship with the book. It has nothing to do with your relationship with me is an important lesson to learn. That's great advice. Say. Okay. You going to answer? So she like, um, I didn't hear you say Tay. Oh, okay. Um, just to piggyback off what everyone else said, and also you had mentioned earlier as far as like, um, readers being like, just okay, when's the next book? Um, you know, just hopping on, like, you know, I think all of us have groups, and you know, it's great because you know, those are those readers that are like there and they love us and they're cheering us on. But then it also, I would just love for readers to be mindful that we're people too. And like you said, you know, we have lives and we're in the middle of a pandemic and some of us are parents who are now having to deal with, you know, kids being home all the time and helping with school more than ever. And sometimes our writing might get put on the back burner a little bit, but you know, I appreciate those that understand and they're like, well, we'll be here whenever you put something out, you know? So that, those readers, I think it helps. For me, it kind of gives me a boost. Like I know they're waiting and it kind of encourages me to like get back in there because it's hard right now. It's hard um, trying to even, it's, it's hard to even try to sometimes put ourselves in the mindset to want to write. Um, because so much is going on and it's, it's scary. But again, like we were saying earlier, like if I can write something that'll help them escape all of this scariness going on right now, then that also kind of like gives me a boost to kind of like, you know, sit down and put the words down and get whatever's coming out next. So they'll have something else to enjoy, even if it's for a day or for a few hours. You got you. That, and, and that makes perfect sense because I think we're all trying to, I think everybody's trying their best. I think that's the general, like everybody's just trying their best. And I think that we all have to be mindful and give each other space and grace and everything else. But to kind of switch it up a little bit, um, I think I have a lot of creative friends. I have friends that are musicians, friends that are writers, friends that are photographers. And I think the one thing that you all love, authors, included is to do the, the creative work but nobody really talks about the business side of things um it's like you go from being like oh i just want to write and then it's like wait i gotta like write it and then get it edited and then like do it over and then get a 
you know, marketing plan and all the other stuff when you're doing it independently. So what has been something that, I guess, fill in the blank, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done that differently. Y'all can take a moment. Whoever's ready to talk, just hop on. Um, I think for me, it was like, just knowing it's okay to talk about yourself. Like, cause it just not, it's not my natural instinct to like promote myself and brag about my work and, you know, promote, promote, promote and do all these things. But it's like, if you don't talk about yourself, then like, why do you expect other people to talk about you? And so being able to get yourself out there by promoting, like really being your biggest promoter until the readers begin to, you know, take some of that labor for you. Okay. Bailey? I'm, I'm thinking. I, I think okay. <laughs> so, so when I when I wrote my first when I wrote my first book and uh I had a family member that was like, Oh, uh I'm I'm real good at <laughs> I'm real good at reading it because when I read books I find all the errors. So when you write, just give it to me and I'll find all the errors. And so then we'll be good. <laughs> so I was like, you know, cool. Then I'm gonna give it to you. You find all the errors, we gonna release it. Well, I finally figured out that I needed a proofreader and sent that book to the proofreader. Uh, I mean, it was so many errors. So I think um, if I would have known then, uh, you know, I wish I would have known that I needed that at the beginning and not necessarily depend on people who give themselves labels and titles that are not really certified in <laughs> those labels and titles. And, and early on too, I, I found, I encountered a lot of people who told me, not a lot, but a couple of people who were like, you know, I can, I can do this for you and I can promote this for you. But a lot of people really were just trying to get on and, and promote themselves through what you were doing, you know, through your hard work. And so um, I've learned to go with the people that really know what they're doing and not the people that they just talk like they know. So I think it's important and not using family as beta readers because family don't understand timelines because they'll have stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I needed my book two weeks ago. You still reading? So um, just, just putting those people in place that can really help you build your business and understanding that it's okay to separate family from business. That makes perfect sense. Um, Daniel? You know what? I would have to say it's something that I'm still working out. And it's like to have a marketing plan. I wish that I every release, I'm like, man, if I would have done X, Y, and Z, but it's always like at the last minute, hey guys, do y'all want to do this party? I just thought about three minutes ago. It's going to be tomorrow. And that's also my release day. Will you please share? Thank you. And I feel like I know better. But it's like in the in the midst of it, I like after I write it and then I'm going through it and reading the edits that the editor sent back and like going through those and then the time is getting closer. And if I've already announced a release date, then I'm like, all right, well, that's the time. And then it's like I look up and <sighs> there was no early marketing or promo or nothing. It was just on the day of surprise of a book. So if I had it to do all over again, and I'm trying to do better starting the release coming up in a couple of weeks, um, I am going to put together a plan earlier. And I think that if I would have done that sooner, then like it could have been like less stress for me and it could have just yielded better results. Who knows? But like it would have been less stress for me. I know that. Okay. 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 I gotta say it hard because I'm like, my uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Keep all your receipts. <laughs> that's actually great advice. A lot of people. No, don't like seriously, like, like, and that's something I'm still like. Also, like Danielle, that's something I'm still working on, especially when it gets into like aspects of traveling and all of that. Keep all your receipts. So you can write it all off on your taxes. <laughs> That's really good advice, though, because I think a lot of people don't think about it until after the right. fact. After the fact, you don't have um, the receipts specifically. Right. So the, I'm almost done with my set of questions. Then we're gonna move into Lisa, which is the writing. So a lot of y'all don't know Lisa's been sitting here patiently quiet, um, and we're about to get into her writing. And 
one question left. So people often say you don't look at what everyone else is doing. Like that's literally the thing. Don't look at what nobody's doing. Just focus on yourself, focus on what you're doing. Um, but how do you know what's like in the, what's the industry standard, what's hot, what's not hot, um, what your peers are doing so that you can maybe be inspired by them, work with the same people that they're working with and don't feel like you're like stepping that, um, you're toggling that line of like copying off of them. Um, and then it's not interrupted by what you're doing because I know a lot of times it's like your stuff could be hot But if you see something you're like dang, that's hotter than you know You're not even looking at like yo, you got the heat right here So how do you do that um, and maintain that balance while being in the know? So being aware of what your peers are doing, but also not letting it sidetrack you from your own stuff and your own work Well, I think for me like um it's a bit of both. Like I do read like all of these ladies' books. I read all of their books, um, but I try not to read as much when I'm writing, just so it doesn't necessarily kind of influence what I'm working on. But at the same time, when I do read their stuff, it stokes the flame. I'm always like, once I read, you know, once I'm done reading like one of Danielle's books, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get back in there and like. I'm ready to write again. So it's like, it's that iron sharpens iron type thing. You know, it's not necessarily like copying. And even in that aspect, you know, we're all going to kind of have something similar at one point or another. It's just going to happen, you know. Um, but we all have our own voices. So even if we write the same trope, it's going to be totally different because we all have totally different styles. So, um, like I said, I, it's just, I try not to read too much when I'm in the process of my own work, but I'm always reading somebody's something. Because you, you have to, I think, anyway. That makes sense. I think one of the great things about the community, too, um, is that when we see um, something that somebody else is doing, not only do we celebrate each other, because anytime any of us releases a book, all of us are going to post that the book is, you know, released. And uh, we're going to encourage each other, uh, whether in front of the scenes or behind the scenes, to keep going. Um, but when we see things that, he, that we like from each other, it's never been a time where I didn't reach out to somebody and ask a question and say, hey, how did you do that? And they say, oh, I just did X, Y, Z. Because for us, for most of us, um, is not necessarily copying. It's like, like, like Tay said, it's just iron sharpening iron and helping the next person get further ahead. And that's what I love about this community or the group of women within this community that I've been connected to is because I can easily, you know, inbox Alexandria and say, hey, what, what was that, you know, streaming service y'all used to do this? She's like, oh, that's blah, 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 you know, and Tay, how you make your, your trailers? Oh, I use this and that, you know, and it's never anything um, you know, like nobody saying, go find it yourself, or you copy it off of me. Um, I think that some of the, the, the feedback that you would get would not necessarily be from within the author community, but it would be from the reader community feeling like that, you know, that there are copiers and things like that. But like Tay said, we all have our own individual unique voice. So even if I do something or, or mimic almost something that I see somebody else do, it's going to be different because is mine you know and it's and it's, it's it's just that the resources um are growing within the community for you know uh pictures and cover artists and things like that but earlier on we we didn't have a whole lot of choice you know <laughs> like you know sally do it and bruce do it you could pick one of these two you know or whatever because we just didn't have the choice you know we didn't have the access but now as it goes along we do so I think that that's a lot of it. But these these ladies within this community, and I can name a ton of them, not just the ones that are here, uh, will easily and readily push you forward and tell you, no, to get this, to do that, or don't use this, or don't do that. So That makes a lot of sense, and I think it makes everything easier. Um, anybody else want to um, answer that question before I move on to the last one, before I change it over to Lisa? Yes, no. You have to. I was just going to say that it's not a competition. And if you like look at it as what it is, which is a community, then you are going to get more out of it and you're going to be more willing to give to it. But when you are looking at it as, oh, these are my competitors, then that's when you start 
getting the negativity that you can sometimes see swirling around with some people. But it's not a competition. It's a community. I feel like there have been tons of times when, like, you'll get in someone's inbox. And uh, I had a situation happen. I didn't know if something was a scam or not. And then Alexandra had posted something about it because I had ignored it for a long time. And then she posted something about it. And then I was like, hey, girl, wait a minute. And then I asked her about it. And she was like, oh, yeah, no, it's not a scam. And then I finally followed up on that email. And it was a it was a good thing that I did. But I wouldn't have even known that if I didn't see her post it. And if she would have left me on red, and um, <laughs> then I would have just been out in these streets not knowing. And so... I feel like knowing that it's a community and not a competition is everything. And don't leave people on red. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so this is the question. I think, I don't know, black lit Twitter, y'all, this is, it's been a thing. So inclusivity or build your own table, or can we do both? So the example I have is romance writers of America. Hopefully you're all familiar with it. It is um, an organization and they deem themselves as, the reader, the, the Rita, the R-I-T-A, the award that you can get, that's the highest award you can get as a romance author, right? That's the story, right? And so under that uh, situation, it's been a lot of like, you know, the, the organization is racist. They don't look at certain stories from black authors and say that that's supposed to be romance. It's been a lot. So my question to you guys is, should we even like try to have inclusivity or should we just be building our own table? Because what I have seen over the past couple of years is that a lot of uh, creators, bloggers, whatever, they all been creating their own stuff. You got the Sister Girls Book Club, you got Indie Love, you have, um, hey girl, girl, have you read? Uh, one part right there, you know, you have, and they've been building their own events, their own awards. Um, and it's been, a thing of like, you know, we have that own community and it's building itself up. It's new, but it's still growing really rapidly. And should we all just be pushing ourselves towards that? Or is it just kind of like, you know, if y'all don't have a seat, I should be I should be able to also have a seat at the readers. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes people say it should be one or the other, or can it be all of that? So just like a musician, when you're younger, everybody wants, if you want to be a singer, you want to get the Grammy. The Grammy has been in your mind from a kid that that's the highest award that you can get in music. So if they're saying that the Rita or any other award that's outside of like the the, the Black literary community um, is not is ignoring uh, this type of these writers, should it still be a fight to get included, or should we just you know totally ignore it, or can we do both? Because I've been seeing that as an argument on Twitter and like in every you know group or something it's just like well just ignore them but it's like well if i want if y'all are saying this is the highest award then no we need to you know make sure we have those people in those seats filling them up that look like us so i just want to get y'all feedback on that yeah i could take a moment to think because i feel like i think it can be both i think that um creating our own should be the priority mm -hmm. but i think that uh I think that we can also demand, like, if you are going to take money from people who look like us, then then there needs to be representation of us in the whoever's making the decisions. Or I don't know how the RWA works. So I don't. I don't want to like whoever the president is, like whoever the the people are. I think there should be a um, there should be representation on there if they're if they're taking money from if they're taking money from us. And, but at the same time, I think that we should put our focus on building what is ours because no one can take away what's yours. No one can um, decide the importance of something that you have deemed important for yourself and for your community. And so I think there is a way to do both. And I think that like a lot of energy should be placed in to building our own though but like as long as people who look like us are like, paying the dues to be is it dues okay <laughs> like <laughs> as long as they're paying dues to be in rwa then yeah there should be representation and they should be inclusive they shouldn't have racist people running it and uh, and all of that but i feel like our efforts should be towards building and um 
continuing to build rather our own. I do. Anyone else? I'm one of those separate but equal people. Um, like like Danielle said, if, if there is a group of people um, that look like us within that organization that are paying dues, then they should have equal um, uh, rec uh, recognition or uh, ability to get what they have within that organization. But I think that um, I'm more of a build your own table and uh, separate but equal. So I think that um, we can go historically, right? And start talking about the things that we built that have been bigger and better and uh, represent us just as well as anybody else can because we know our own stories and we know the difference between urban and romance. We know the difference between, um, you know, suspense and IR. We know, we know the differences. And so when we try to take our story and leave it into the hands of a group of people who don't understand us and we see that historically that they've never even tried to understand us, then we are leaving ourselves open to be not understood. But if I give my story to you, then you understand drinking Kool-Aid and playing outside until the lights come on. They don't get that reference. You know, I may say talking about in my book and they, well, somebody else is like, what's, what's talking about? You know, but that's my, my vernacular. So you understand that you get my story. Um, and so I don't subscribe to trying to follow behind anything that anybody is doing outside of, of us. Um, I don't think that I want to. I won't pay dues for you to just pocket my money and never recognize my work. So I'll take my money and my skills elsewhere. Um, I just think that it's important that we have our own. So let's build our own and make our own the most important for us. And if you can just take a take a, a, a title or award and say that this is the most uh, prestigious award, who said that? Who made that distinction? And who decided that what y'all was thinking award is going to do is going to make me be better at what I'm doing? Because you don't understand me and you don't know. Child, she got interrupted by the spirit. <laughs> I promise like, she got interrupted. I can't stand for people to try to tell me who I am or, or, or what I'm supposed to be doing or what my story is. I don't want that. So um, I think it's important to build our own table and, and tell our own stories and make our own award the most prestigious award. Bailey, yeah. I was with you. You got cut off, but I feel like we all got the spirit of what you were saying. And I didn't want to interrupt you because I was like, girl, I'm with you. <laughs> um, did anybody else have anything to add? I feel like Bailey took us a train. And it's Sunday, girl. Um, anybody else have anything else to add before I turn it over to Lisa? Anyone? All right. So Lisa has been sitting here patiently waiting her time to shine, ask y'all questions. And we're going to talk about the writing more. You guys is writing career because I mean, that's why we're here. So come on, Lisa. Lisa Marie. Hi, guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, so we're going to shift gear just a little bit, but Bailey, let me just give you a yes to that last yes. Say that. Say that. Um, wow. So my first question to you ladies is, you know, you all are romance writers. What influences your storylines for these romance novels that you produce? You know, you guys have differing books. And it's very interesting to me because I've read books from all of you ladies and, um, you know, it goes to show to the point of the question and to the, to Bailey's last point, as we're shifting the conversation, ro black romance embodies so many different layers and characters and plots. And it's like, you, you know, Tay has a whole security company and Bailey, you have a whole church group. And then, yo, we've been to New York and we've got disasters. And Alexandria, Alexandra, we have college students and we have basketball players and rep, like, you know, but it's all black romance and it embodies so many different characters. So what are some of the influences behind some of these uh, creations and some of these plots and some of these storylines? So for me, I'm literally like inspired by anything. I mean, the smallest thing I could be watching TV and some happens in a commercial and I'm like, ooh, 
I could I, like a whole story can start playing in my head based on the smallest things. And I think that's why right now it's been a little more difficult to create for me personally, just because the world is moving so much slower. And so there's just not as much inspiration. If I can't go outside and people, if I can't people watch in the airport or I can't just, you know, be in the store, people watch and stuff like that. Like I'm on a mission when I go on the store, I'm putting on my mask, I'm grabbing my things real quick and I'm trying to get out of there. But so to not have that, you know, that usual people interaction and stuff, the inspiration is low. And so the creativity is a little lower for me, but I, I literally get inspired by any, like anything, literally anything. I could be on Instagram scrolling, I'm getting inspired. I can be on Twitter, see a funny tweet. And now I'm going to write a whole comedian. Like it does not matter. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same with me. Like everything, everybody. I know for my last, um, night book um ramsey was a muralist and i had actually like the year before i was on a radio show with my friends and there was a muralist on the show and like as soon as i met him and saw his work i was like even my husband knew like we left the studio and he was like you're putting him in a book aren't you and i was like oh yeah he's definitely going in a book and so just like like alexander said everything like all around me like there's always something a song could like spark um, inspiration for a book. I mean, even like the last book I wrote, like just, it was my husband's birthday and I was just like, well, I wanna write a book about characters getting together on their birthdays. <laughs> and that was it. So even the tiniest thing can be an inspiration. It's the same for me. I think that being, um, in the house so much has really kind of um, diminished my ability to to find those those inspirations. Um, but yeah, anything can 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 spark an idea. I remember with my first book, I was on YouTube. I don't know what I started out looking at, but I ended up down this rabbit hole of funerals. <laughs> I don't know how I end up on funerals, but I was looking at the idea of. What happens once uh, a person who who really is um, a, a Christian and loves God and is a leader in the church? What happens when they lose their spouse? And that kind of just triggered the whole story of my first book. And so it just kind of depends on where you are and your circumstances. But usually, it's just little things that can spark a whole entire story or even series. I wholeheartedly agree. It's uh, for for me. It could be music. Uh, when I used to be out in the world, like Alexander was saying, like it could be like overhearing a conversation or seeing people like Tay was saying. Um, what came to mind was with sweatpants season, um, me and a friend were talking about, it was during the summer and he had said something about he was ready to, um, to go out uh, to see the, like sundresses or whatever. And then we got into a conversation about the objectification of women. And then that's where sweatpants season and cuffing season was born. And so it just, it can be as little as a conversation or seeing people or just being entertained by anything. Okay, with that being said, little things, small things, let's talk about that inspire you. Let's talk about that one small thing that people either love or hate. If everybody can tell me a trope that they absolutely love, want to do, have done, and one trope that they absolutely are like, I'm staying away from it. I don't ever want to touch it. It's been done to death. Don't want to do it. Never want to do it. Or if I've done it, I regret doing it. Tropes are like a big conversation, especially like in the book club. It's like, we always like, oh, I wish you wouldn't have did that or I wish, or they did it very well. And I think tropes are tricky because it's like either you do it really well and it goes over or it's like, you just shouldn't, you should have left it alone. I love Friends to Lovers. I find that I keep writing them, even though that's not how like I operate my friendships in my real life. Um, but I love it. As far as anything that I, I don't really hate any trope, honestly. Like I'll read whatever, if it's a good story, I'll read it. But I don't write cheating. I guess that's the only one that, um, that I don't write, but anything else, I feel like if it's, if it's good, I'll read it. 
That was a good one, Danielle. Especially for it, especially as a romance author, that's a big one. Like that is a huge trope. Like Black Men Don't Cheat was a campaign for a reason. I mean, we all know, but okay. I believe that alone. <laughs> I believe that alone. it's the Lord's Day. I'm gonna leave that alone. You know, I was going to agree with Danielle that there's really not a lot that I don't, there's not, there's like not a specific trope that I don't like, um, but I really enjoy enemies to lovers because I, I enjoy like seeing that there's clearly some chemistry here, but y'all hate each other, but something is going to happen that brings y'all together and now y'all just flourishing because we know that that hate was really rooted in a lot of love for each other. Uh, so that's probably my favorite, but yeah, there's not one that I, I don't like, well, I, and you really don't see it in black romance, but I feel like in more mainstream, you'll see like some, just a lot of weird, just some weird stuff for me personally, like step situations and, and stuff like that. Like you're, you're not going to get that from me. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I like the friends. I, I love, I love enemies to lovers and I, I like friends. To lo- I like the, them having um, some type of pre-existing relationship. Uh, that's my favorite and see how it kind of evolves, but I like them all. Um, the only thing that I probably would not try is some type of uh, polygamy type, three-way type situation, because I, I don't know it. Um, and so I, I'm not really familiar <laughs> with it, so I don't think that was something that I would want to write. Um, and cheaters, the guys don't usually cheat, but I have written a story where a couple found themselves in that situation, but uh, historically, uh, no. Um, I love all of those. Like, I really like enemies to lovers, friends to lovers. I also really like second chance romances to where like, you know, something happened and they find their way back to one another and they make it work. And like, you know, they, we know they were meant to be together this whole time. And like, y'all just need to get y'all stuff together and (laughs) get back together. Um, there's nothing that I really hate. Um, I'm kind of like Alexandra, the step sort of thing. That's not my uh, wheelhouse. So <laughs> those are things I'll be avoiding. But I'm I'm pretty open to a lot of things, but that's not one of those. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Those are some great troops. And you know, having the book club, we have discussions about just themes that we absolutely love like I said before that do really some themes just do really well and the friends the lovers and the enemies the lovers are like I think top two like people love seeing those tropes replayed over and over again I think that's very unique to what was said earlier in uh the session about how something you guys can all do something but because your voices are so unique it won't look the same at all you know so it's like tay you could write it alex you could write it bailey you could write it danielle you could write it and it's all the same trope but it looks like it's a completely different book because and i think that is important and it's just based on like what you everybody i think it speaks to as black people we experience life so different and i think that is so important that when it, it shows up in the work um and to you know, touch back on, you all mentioned being home has kind of dampered your creativity because you're not experiencing life and getting those real life touch points and pain points that you use to base your books off of. Are you all full-time writers or do you have other obligations or other occupations? Tell me about your life outside of writing. What else are you guys doing? I am a full-time government employee. I work for the feds. Um, and so writing for me, um, it had, it, it, I would love for it to be full-time, but it's not. And in this time um, of being home, uh, my work has increased significantly because coronavirus has given us all um, a, a whole nother job. You know, So I look at my job with the government my writing and then coronavirus, I have three jobs because I have to make sure, you know, that uh, the house is lights all down, we have toilet paper, you know, I have to make sure we have food, 
uh, everybody has masks and, you know, it's just a whole nother thought process that has to come into play now, you know, that I did not have before. So writing, um, as much as I would love for it to be my main thing is, is, is not, um, you know, my job and really coronavirus is taking over slot two and then writing, unfortunately for me right now has been, um, my third, my third job. I write full time and I teach college courses um, part time because of Corona and how that has played out. The uh, workload for teaching has increased, but the classes like they instead of teaching two classes, I'm teaching one class with a lot more students. And so that way they can get around, you know, paying us uh, for two classes but serving just as many students and so but yeah but I write full-time um I also write full-time mostly <laughs> um I'm also stay-at-home mom wife and I um I'm an aerial yoga instructor and I'm also in the middle of um training to become a certified yoga teacher as well Um, so I write full time. Um, when I first started, I didn't. I was a teacher and then writing also, but now I write full time. And I also help run Girl Have You Read, which is a black romance blog that has been super busy because for the authors that uh, creativity hasn't been stifled, they have been pumping out a lot of books. And so we want to um, we want to make sure that we're giving them the you know putting them on the forefront and highlighting them as much as we can because i know people are looking for something to read while they're at home wow y'all got it going you all we got professors teachers yo congratulations to all of you that is amazing um government employee y'all yes black women i salute y'all take my head off to y'all because i barely got myself together um, uh, you all identify as romance authors, whether contemporary, urban, but romance authors. Did you go into writing knowing you wanted to be a romance author or did you let the work develop you into a romance author and was like, this is the genre and I'm sticking to it. And are you willing to play and kind of step outside of that comfort boundary of romance and explore other genres as well. I know for me, it <laughs> romance definitely wasn't like um, where I saw myself as far as an author. Um, I used to write different things. It was never romance though. Um, so I guess I'm comfortable in romance now, um, but I could maybe see myself you know, stepping out a little bit. Well, honestly, I'm scared to do that at this point. Cause like I said, I'm so comfortable in romance that like, that's just where I am. So I think, you know, pushing out of my comfort zone, it might, I, I'm open to it, but I just love romance so much. So we'll see. <laughs> I think even if I tried to write something else, it would round back out to romance. Like, it just, <laughs> no matter what I would try to do, somebody would fall in love with somebody, have sex, and end up together in the end. Uh, that's just, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I could try it. It may start off as something else, but ultimately, it would round back out to that. So I guess it's the comfortability, or maybe it's just a, a better way of looking at it. It's just, it's, it's my lane. Uh, is what I've been gifted to do. And so I think as long as you stay in your lane and do what you do, then you'll be okay. Yeah, I write, um, I write romance, but I also feel like I love mysteries. So I will write, I will throw a, a, type, a mystery romance together real quick. So there'll be a whole mystery going on, but there's also going to be a love happening and sex happening and it's going to be a good time. And so, but romance is, is where my heart is. Yeah, I agree with Daniel. I think no matter what, there's always gonna be some type of romantic ties. But I also think that romance stretches so many different ways. And so like you said, you can do a mystery romance, you can do a romantic suspense, you can do a thriller romance, you can do a psychological thriller romance. Like you can, you can 
stretch it so far, but still have that, you know, happily ever after, happily for now uh, in the end. Okay. So y'all lovers at heart. Y'all, y'all some, y'all some women that got a lot of love in your hearts. Okay. I see it. I feel love in the room. Um, wow. So to segue into a more personal question, what are some, some, uh, misconceptions that you guys have gotten when you tell people you are a romance writer? Like, what are some of the misconceptions? What do we, because, and I ask this question because, um, I'm just going to phrase it this way. Remember when Zane first came out and she posted like a list of questions she got asked? And I was like, people, wow. Like they, 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 y'all, like I wouldn't even have, and they was like, well, she is a erotica romance writer. And I'm like, but this is what you, so, so what are some misconceptions that you get? when you tell people, hi, I'm a romance writer. This is what I do. What are, what do people say? What do they ask you? What's the wildest thing somebody's ever like uh, said to you, asked you, accused you of? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a misconception, but I know like a lot of people, when I say I write romance, like they'll be like, Oh, like 50 shades. Or, oh, like Zane books. Like I was at the post office one day and I was mailing some books and um, he was like, oh, you're a romance author. So you write books like Zane. And I was like, uh, I mean, I write books like Tay. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> like, you know, so there's that. And then for me, like people who know me and then they find out that like I write romance, they're always like, oh, it's always the quiet ones. That's, I get that a lot. <laughs> it's always the quiet ones. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, what what does that mean? I don't know, but they always say that. They're like, mm, it's always the quiet ones. Or because my dad's a pastor, they're like, mm, now I get it. <laughs> what, what, well, get what? People are so weird. Like, what is it to get? It? Romance is a part of life. Like, what is there to get? I don't know, but that's what I get. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone because I don't understand it. So it's always funny to me, somebody asks, oh, what do you do? And I'll say, I'm an author. And they say, well, what do you write? And I say, I write romance. They go, ooh. And it's like, what, like, what is this? It's like, what's happening here? Like, what, like, what do you mean by that? Um, but I think the, the craziest thing somebody asked me is like, so like all the sex scenes in your book, like, are these things that you've done? And it's like, why are you my business? <laughs> like, <laughs> back up. Uh, like, why would you even think to ask? But I think just because uh, the idea that romance or the what people think about romance sometimes is just the sex part, and then they're like, "Well, if you wrote it, you must be do like doing X, Y, Z." And it's like, can I have any imagination? Also, like, relax. And so, yeah, that was that was a moment. <laughs> That's like saying to an actress, every sex scene you've ever acted in, you've had to act it out at some point in your life, like. Mm -hmm exactly like, no. like, this is yeah people, like you said people are, are weird people are weird <laughs> I think one of the craziest things uh for me is when I first started um I think a lot of people's uh connection to uh black authors was through uh the best man and how uh <laughs> Wasn't that he wrote that whole book about all his friends and like there was zero imagination. He just switched some names around, but all the situations were true and everything. And so I got a lot of questions of, well, it, does your husband play instruments <laughs> or, so, uh, you know, so uh, who, who died that made you feel like, you know, like all of these questions, like they were about the stories or about me or people that I know, and, and they're not. You know, we have the ability to create characters, but so many times early on, people were like, oh, so uh, one of my characters didn't like uh, cherry tomato. Oh, so you don't like cherry tomatoes? Which is, I was like, that's not, that's my character. That has nothing to do with me. But well, one of the funnier things is that we were um, uh, looking at buying a house and our realtor, um, I, she knew that I worked for the government, but she didn't know that I was an author. So eventually I told her I was a romance author. She said, oh, that's why you guys' relationship is so great. 
like, girl, ain't got nothing to do. My husband's not in one of these books. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But it's funny how people think that those characters are are you or that if you, you know, write a smoky scene, that that's what you, you know, you rolled over from the covers and decided to put pick up your laptop and write that down in the story. <laughs> I feel like all of those, everything that everyone else said, 100%. Um, I think also with dating, um, men will just automatically make assumptions about what that means to, like, if you write romance, then, like, oh, so your expectations are, like, first of all, my expectations are my expectations, like, period. It has nothing to do with anything that I've written. But also the, like, this one guy was like, are you going to write me in a book? Because I don't want, I don't want you to put the things I say in a book. And it's like, sir, you're not making it past this date that we're on, like, let alone to be in this book. But, um, like, but yeah, so it's like, like that. You're not even interesting enough to be a character. Right. Like, so, so stop it. You're not even, what you Please. said is not even good enough to make it in a book. Like, <laughs> this no, no, sir. <laughs> My imagination is way better than anything you could come up with, sir. But well, congratulations. Good job. Good job. But yes, that's the, that was the most, um, yeah. How egotistical. Is my conversation going to make it in one? First of all, sir, can you read? Because are you going to read it? Let's, let's just, let's just, are you going to read it? Because I don't want to get sued in the case. Are you, can you read? That's number one. Number two, you're not even that dang interesting, but okay. All right, boo. Probably with somebody that sent you what you doing every five minutes. What you doing? Yeah, that's going in the book, boo. What you doing? How was work? That's all going to go in the book. As the boy who got left on red. My bad, y'all. I'm sorry, because I be having some disasters in dating, and then y'all already know I ain't going to take it there, though. So, um, who child, it's Sunday, man. Let me act right before she kick me off. Let me act right. You get an idea, as we talked about earlier. You get an idea. These characters come to you. And what is the process from idea? Do you, like, get a storyline going do you write out books from a to z or do you let it emerge as you're working on it or do you feel like you have to have the whole plot planned out before you see a project and start it let me know what your process is i'm picking brains i'm interested i can get an idea um and i can go with i can go with that idea uh but as I stated before, my stories are never written in chronological order. I just kind of write it as it comes to me. I've, I've tried to plot out a story and write it from A to Z, but it just never works out because I kind of feel like when I, when, what my strategy is, is when I feel like I've hit that spot where I'm stuck, if I know what's going to happen after that, I kind of just skip over it and go back to it when I can and keep on going. So um, I don't write from, from, from A to Z. My, sometimes the hardest part that I have with writing a story is coming up with character names. Um, man, that's why we see us in our group like, hey, what's a male name? Because we just, you know, names are, are crazy. So that's one of the hardest parts for me is coming up with what to name these characters and then writing those names to make sense in the entirety of the story. I've gone halfway through a story and like this name dumb and have to change the whole name. But also I do enjoy different names, but um but I, I will write a whole story. I mean I've written like half a story and then decided that that name just didn't fit that character and change it. So names are, are are hard. But I don't write in chronological order. I have to write in chronological order. I um and because I will write something and I have to let it flow because it plays like a movie in my head. And so if it stops, then I'm stuck because I can't skip that part to write what's next. I have to just stay there and like let the characters talk and work it out. And then, which is part of the reason why I don't leave myself time on the back end 
for the marketing that I need to do. But like, I will let them play out the way they want to play out. And, and sometimes I know, I'll know specific things. Like I'll know the character, I'll know the point that I'm trying to, like the purpose of the story. And sometimes I'll know the ending. And that's it. Everything else they go through is what they tell me, but I'll know like, this is the message that's supposed to come across and this is the main character and this is the the end result who that person ends up with all of that sometimes that's still up in the air but i'll know the end result and i'll know the message um so i'm more so like danielle um i'm definitely i write in order and when they stop talking then i stop writing because i can't i have a very hard time now sometimes like if there's a scene like i'll write it out you know just to be like oh well i know i want this to happen later on but i'm not actually writing the scene like i'll write it when i get there um i very loosely plot, <laughs> um, very loosely. And sometimes like if you can see the board behind me, there's nothing on there. So sometimes I don't plot at all. And I just, I really, I really like going with the flow more often than not and just letting the characters speak to me. Sometimes I argue with them and sometimes they're like, hey, this is our story. So you need to write what we're telling you to write. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. So for me, I usually get an idea and then I'm like in my phone jotting down all the notes that I can that are like coming to me just fresh right off the cuff. Everything that's coming to me right in that moment. And then later on, I'll go back and look and like, okay, is this really something that can manifest into an actual book or is this me just being weird? And so I'll, uh, I'll look at it and I'll kind of analyze it and say, you know what, I can see this happening. And I didn't used to be much of a plotter, but I have found myself doing a little bit more loose plotting as I get deeper into the story, just so I can know how it ends. Usually I can start off a book just going and it's just flowing and whatever, whatever. But like they said, once you, because I also write in order, once you get to a point where the characters are talking, it's like, oh snap, like what I'm supposed to be doing. And so the loose plotting kind of helps get me out of that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So Ed, you all touched on your, you can, you can start a story and know where the story is going, which brings me to my next question. Do you feel as a romance author, a happily ever after ending defines the story? Like does romance have to have that end, end happiness of the resolution of these two or more, in some cases, characters? For me, I need um, at least a happy for now. It's not necessarily about, you know, you're not going to see the wedding and the babies and all these other things necessarily happen at the end of the story at Epilogue, but at least you can see that they are in a good spot and in my head, they are moving forward happily. Yeah, I agree with Alexandra. As long as it's like we can see that they're together and happy, it doesn't necessarily have to be the wedding or the baby or whatever, but as long as, you know, they're in a, I guess, happy, like happy for now, you know, that's, that's good for me. Yeah, I agree with everyone. I, I like to um, finish them off uh, in a in a way that will leave hope, you know, whether or not you see the marriage or not, or the baby or whatever, um, just a hopefulness that that they'll be good in the future. So I agree, but I do feel like there are, are times when the love story takes place and then when you get beyond like so they have their happy happy like for now and then some other stuff happens afterward and i mean and, and that's just life stuff but that doesn't take away from the fact that it was a love story and so i stand by that but like overall i um, i do think that like ha seeing them happy and together does make me happy when i'm reading and so 
I was gonna I was gonna defer to Danielle for the answer to that question. <laughs> anyway, I knew that hers was gonna be just slightly different than what everybody else. <laughs> Bailey, I knew that too, because I know Danielle likes to play trickery. Like Danielle be putting trickery in her books, and I'd be like, you know what? I, okay, okay. And you know, just I called it, I'm like Professor Allen, I don't have time for this. And I will straight slide up in her inbox. I'm like, listen, Professor Allen, let me just talk to you real quick. Let's 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 have a chat. Like I'm one of her students. Let's have a chat about this green, because um, yeah, she be putting trickery in her books. And I'd be like, you know, I don't have time. Let me know what I'm getting myself into because I don't have time for this today. But okay, last question, ladies. As independent authors, what does that afford you as far as flexibility, as far as creativity? Like, what is it that you love, absolutely love about being an independent romance author? I love being able to tell our story and tell our story with, um, you know, with, with our voice. And um, I love the ability, what, what's come along with that, within the storytelling is this camaraderie of the readers and the authors that has really uh, impacted my life in such a positive way, because I like a lot of um, authors, I, I am an introvert. Well, I'm a socialized introvert, which means that I can be out in public and all of that, but I would much rather be at home <laughs> myself, uh, but I do it because I have to. Um, but it has afforded me the ability and the opportunity to meet so many amazing people um, that really do drive you and push you to be your best and they encourage you. Um, and writing has given me the ability to tell these stories um, that, that may not have been heard before um, just because they haven't because it's my voice. So um, that's really what is afforded to me. And then financially too, because, um, you know, we get paid, you know, when we, when we write, when we do things. And, and so um, I think that the ability to travel and meet new people and, and see new things has uh, really been the best part of this whole experience for me. Yeah, um, pretty much what Bailey said. It's definitely afforded me um, being able to travel in places that I never even would have thought to travel um, and meet so many amazing readers and other authors and it's given me kind of a sense of community with all of these authors. Like I'm able to reach out to them anytime I need something. And that's not even just to say um, regarding writing. Like if there's something personal going on, I know I can reach out to any of these ladies and they're gonna be like, well, what do you need? With no hesitation. And as far as writing, being an independent writer, I get to write what I wanna write, how I wanna write it. And nobody's gonna tell me you know, oh, well, you shouldn't write it like that. Like what we were saying earlier, because they might not understand it. But I know all of these readers and all of these writers, they get as a Black author, you know, they understand it. So, you know, I'm able to, to like I said, just write exactly the way I want to write and not have any kind of filter because somebody is trying to tell me how I should write my story. Yeah, I absolutely agree with uh, what Bailey and Tay said. And just like being able to maintain that authenticity when you're telling, when you're being creative is so important. And so to just the idea of having somebody comb through, like somebody who doesn't know me or the community that I feel like I write for, combing through my work, telling me this isn't right, this isn't right. Like that is like, like I want to fight about it. So <laughs> I'd rather just, you know, maintain my status as an independent author and being able to tell the stories exactly how I want them to be told. I agree with what everyone else said. It's, it's a freedom that comes with it. It's a freedom of expression. It's a freedom of the way you want to write about um, your, like write your stories, write about the people that you love, write, um, anything it's the freedom and the experience and the community and uh financially it's a good look like it's a lot of things that come with it that i think that really make it special honestly like i feel i feel blessed to be able to do this 
and um, to, to know all of you because I feel like it is the other authors and the readers and the bloggers that really help keep me going. So like, I just feel blessed to do it. I feel blessed to do it with you all. And, um, and I feel like writing what I want to write, how I want to write it, despite like, and, and feeling good, like putting it out there and knowing that whatever happens, happens. But long after I'm gone, my work is still going, I'm still going to be able to stand by my work 20, 40 years from now, because I put out what I wanted to. It wasn't somebody's interpretation of what I originally wanted to say. It was what I wanted to say. And so all of that. So those are all great answers. Um, right. Thank you, ladies. I was about to say one more thing, Cherie. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so just real quick, real fast, in order, lightning, lightning speed. One word of advice for aspiring romance authors. Just real fast. Don't be afraid to reach out to other authors. Thank you. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Nike. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> There's never going to be a perfect time to start, so just start. Oh, never perfect time. Be authentic to yourself. Stay true to your story. I love Brad that. Bailey said, stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna do it just like Bailey. Stay in your lane. <laughs> I, I like that. I like it too. Um, so I know we had y'all here for a minute. The last and final question is if they are if a person who was interested in reading your work, they've never picked up a book by you and they wanted to read your work, what is the first book, standalone or series, that they should start with? Um, Tay Russ, I'm gonna ask you first because I'm doing the whole Brady Bunch thing. Um, for standalone, Love by the Books, and then for series, the nobles of Sweet Rabbits. Okay. Um, Alexandra. Uh, if you want a standalone, I would say if only for the summer. And if you wanted to start a series, I would say uh, the FWB series, which is two books, The Games We Play and The Lessons We Learn. Okay. Um, Bailey? So they're all series. Uh, basically, <laughs> so I would say start from, start from the very beginning with uh, Blue's Beauty because uh, all of my characters are intertwined throughout all of my series. And Danielle? I would say for standalone, start with work song, and for a series, I guess uh, the women of V. Okay. Well, thank you all um, for like joining me and Lisa today because we know you have a lot of other things to do. We are in the middle of a pandemic and it's getting heavy, or because I'm like, people won't wear their masks. And I know that readers will appreciate you taking this time out because all of the questions that you ad answered, we get, ad we see those questions every, like every time in our group or they'll like even message me. I'm just like, do y'all know I don't have these people on like speed that like, I don't, I can't like call in and be like, well, well, can you ask if I'm like, well, why don't y'all ask these people yourselves? But I mean, the readers appreciate you us as a book club in the community we really appreciate you guys um and we're always trying to be taken to the next level some kind of way to promote you on a, any other end and i think that's what black indie authors day is about um that's what behind the pen is about that's what our book club is about is to promote um the authors and the community um itself so thank y'all for um doing this and i really um it was great this is good <laughs> this is really good